you know, obviously a good win, happy for the guys. Um, you know, I thought it was as well-rounded as we played from the opening kickoff on the kickoff return, special teams, offense, defense, you know, kicking field goals. I um, thought it was uh, as, as well-rounded as we can be. So um, credit to the guys, as I told them. We, we feel like we're doing something different. They're doing the same things. They've just worked and worked and worked and gotten better and better and better. Uh, I'm especially proud of those seniors. Um, you know, 30 of them, all different, you know, different journeys to get here. But especially the guys who've been here for a long time. You know, they've been through three coaches, different ADs. You know, they've been, they've, as I said, said earlier, they've stood in the gap. It's not easy to do, you know, in a place with expectations like this, and they've done it. So I was really happy for them to be able to grab that trophy and, um, They've never seen it before and hold it and bring it in the locker room. So happy for them. Happy for last year's seniors. It was great to see, you know, the Ethan Pipers, the Taggies, the Rhymers, the guys who, you know, we weren't able to get them there last year. I promised them last year that I'd fly them to the bowl game. So I was happy that, uh, happy that we, you know, we can guarantee a couple more weeks and we can, we can bring those guys from last year, uh, hopefully, to the bowl game this year. So. You wanted uh, the players to do this. You said that they're going to be the guys that do it. Your offense certainly did that today. What, do you, what accounts for how well your offense played from the start from the very first drive until the final touch? Well, you know, Sam, it's, 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 you know, I just can't have a good moment, right? You know me, I have to like always be, be, be whatever. But even that halftime, I was like, you know, the only, you know, we turned the ball over on the twenty yard line, you know, so they gave the, you know, our offense did. We um, we missed snapped it on third down for like uh, again. Uh, we had a penalty after a touchdown that led to a good kickoff return. So, you know, we dropped a couple touchdowns. So there was still a ton of plays that were left out there. Um, I just think. Um, I just think uh, Dylan was really on, and we ran the football really well. Um, Jacory worked the middle of the field, but you know I thought Emmett was you know first time you know first hundred yard rusher of the season. But you know also catching the ball in the backfield, the tight end showed up. You know the ball went to where it was supposed to be. Um, we were able to protect the quarterback. So I just think you know they went out and they executed, and when we executed, we scored. When we didn't execute, we, we struggled to score. But um, that's guess my point. Like the, there was no new plays. I mean I had to call time out a couple times because Dana was you know tripped up trying to get the words out. And because, um, you know, he knew what he wanted. And a lot of plays, you know, some of the other coaches helped him with. I thought it was great collaborative by those guys on the sideline. Can you speak to the rhythm that your offense found um, into the first half and then into the, into the second half, and just the rhythm and play calling and just the, the way that the offense moves? Yeah, I think, um, you know, if, if you go back throughout the course of the year, you know, we've had a lot of drives killed by penalties and things like that. I thought there was, there was no negative plays, right? So, like, last week, you know, I know you guys asked me about pushing the ball on the field. I said, well, you know, you know, we were able to get the ball to the quarterback's hand. Every ball kind of went forward, right? It's like, you know, like playing like Lynx golf. You know, just keep knocking it down the fairway. And today we were able to do that, but also make some explosive plays. But the players made the explosive plays. The players made people miss. Like Emmett was untackable at times today, right? You know, so I thought that was another component to it. And then we were probably, you know, more aggressive in the fourth quarter. You know, as I've talked about, you know, me looking at it saying, hey, how do you, how do you, how do you kind of challenge and change the way that we're going to play to be a little bit more explosive? And, you know, we threw the ball more in the fourth quarter than I normally would. And uh, Dylan made those plays. You know what I mean? Like, he made great decisions. He put the ball where they needed to be. And, um, you know, even, even, you know, I don't know how many we scored, but 40, what? 44. We probably could have scored 55, you know, with a couple balls hit our hands and we had to kick field goals. So, um, you know, credit to those guys for coming out and making the plays. What does it know just to advance the program forward at this point to finally get over this hurdle that's – Block the program since 2016. Well, I think there's a, there's obviously like a psychological component to it, but there's also a physical component to it. And, and as I said when I was talking to the um, production, you know, you think they, they've the last seven years Wisconsin's been in a bowl game. That's roughly 15 practices a year. That's 105 practices that their players have had for of development that we haven't had. And so, you know, this is a great way to send off the seniors. It's also an opportunity for us to continue to develop our players. And then kind of the, you know, the, the, you know, the cloud that kind of hangs over everything, you know, like uh, it's gone. You know, this will be the last time we ever celebrate six wins. Um, but uh, but uh, as I've told our players, it's always the hardest to do it, you know, because it's, it, it's, be, it's always hard to be the first to do it, right? You know, you're, everyone's always, you know, your own self. You're questioning, like, is this right? Is that right? Once you do it, it's like, okay, this works. I trust it now. And so I, I can't thank, you know, Ty and Giff and Nash and all those guys enough. You know, Bryce, is they, they've trusted it. And, uh, you know, whether it was Buscini putting the ball out of the two, I mean, it just comes down to players making plays. And um, so I, ho I hope as we come in tomorrow, our players have a much better picture of what's possible when you do things at the level they're capable of. And, you know, we, we've gotten to a bowl game. We have another opportunity on Friday to go play another game and uh, a rivalry game, and it, it should mean a lot to us. Yeah, uh, what, what kept your confidence during this tough stretch here, the four-game losses? I mean, keeping this team together, you, you, you make some personnel changes. But what, what made you believe in this team so much? 
Well, it's like, the, you know, again, you know, it's the third time I've done this and I'm in the same exact spot that I've been every other time, right? So it's just kind of like, you know, the hard thing now is, you know, you see other people that are doing it faster in different ways. And so that, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Like you're, why people say, well, why didn't we do this? Why didn't we do that? But, um, you know, um, I was just trusting in what I saw, you know. And like I said, you know, at USC, I mean, I mean, I, I, me and Troy were talking this week. I said, you know, you know, you get a defensive pass interference missed call on the one and the one on the goal line. You know, if, if we score one of those two touchdowns, don't, does everyone now believe that what we're doing is right? So, but again, as I said to you guys, I wasn't going to worry about the refs. I was just going to worry about trying to play better. And I think the guys are just getting better. We have a freshman quarterback out there. Like, he's going to get better every week, right? Like, you know, we have, we have young players. You know, we have guys who have you – know, so I just think uh, seeing the guys, seeing the way they work every day, knowing that they hear, you know, they hear all the noise, and they probably have their own questions. Like, Coach, you have, you're working us really hard, and we're not getting what we want. But um, no one's ever accomplished anything in life by quitting halfway through. And one of the quotes, and I think it was James Clear who said this, you know, whether something's a success or failure usually depends on when you measure it. So if you measured it last week, you would say, boy, they're failing. Today you might say, boy, they're being successful. And so I just prefer to take the long approach. There's unbelievable leadership here. Whether it's you know President Gold, whether it's Troy Dannon, whether it's Governor Pillen, whether it's people, all the people that support the program, you know, all the people have just kept saying to me like, "Hey, just we trust you, just keep doing it." And I keep saying that to the players. And I think you saw a team today that a lot of questions you guys asked me this week was, "Hey, where's our head at?" Like I thought you saw a team today that obviously believes in what we're doing. What was your, I guess, your immediate emotion? You know, you know when you're going to win. There's probably about three minutes left. You're up 19. What is the emotions that flood over you, and what did you see from your team? Um, you know, I, I was. Uh, it was important to me that those, you know, because Wish came over to me and said, hey, those guys need to go grab that trophy. And I had forgot that there was a trophy, you know. And, and, and not because we haven't had it. It's just not the way my, you know, my brain really works that way. But I was like, I, mean, I just can't tell you, like, how much, you know, Ty Robinson means to me. I just can't express it. I can't express how much. Uh, those guys have meant to me. And I don't know that everyone's always treated them fairly. I don't know that I don't know that like they, they guys, I don't know if anyone understands what they've had to endure here. You know, um, it's just hard to be a player and have different coaches. It's just so hard, right? And um, I've just seen the I've seen the look on their face coming off the field after UCLA. I've seen the look on their face coming off the field, and just me like being like, what else can I do for them? So honestly, Sam, today my my speech to them in the locker room was, I would give anything to do this for you, but I can't. You have to go do it. You know, and so. So my emotion was that. I wanted them to have that moment. And then, you know, then I was just trying to get off the field. <laughs> you know, they, they wanted to interview me with the Big Ten, and they took a long time. And, you know, I, I got a little bit, you know, a little bit choked up there, too, because I just, you know, they, they've worked so hard, and I, I wanted them to have this. I know how much you stress the middle eight portion of the game. You win that 13 to nothing. How much of a little dip did that give you guys going in the locker room with how that half finished and everything? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I thought we did a nice job at the end of the half of – I thought we did a nice job at the end of the half of, of, of scoring um, a touchdown, right, and then getting the field goal and then, and then you know, calling the out-of-bounds play. And, and then John, you know, credit to John. You know, you know just think about, you know, just think about what he's, what he's done to improve this year. I mean, from like, man, there, there were days, you know, I don't, I don't want to say this is embarrassing, there was, there was a day or two when we kicked field goals in practice where he didn't make one. And, you know, I, I told you guys, I sat there that day in the talking to him when he was in the hot tub, and I was like, hey, you'll get through this at some point, I promise you. And just to see him. You know, just the faith we had in them. But that was really important to coming out of the half. You know, we, th we could have had a touchdown there, too, coming out of the half. I think the biggest thing, and I think credit to Coach Holgerson, what he's brought to the offense, I don't think it's – I don't. I mean, maybe it's play calling. I think the biggest thing he's brought is a little bit of swagger to them of, like, you know, we threw the touchdown to Nayor, but, you know, he was out of bounds, right? And so, you know, typically that would be like, oh, my gosh, we're snake. And he was just like, let's do it again. <laughs> and then we threw a touchdown two plays later. So I thought that that aggressive mindset of, like, hey, we're going to keep going, guys. Until you know, until they pull us off, we keep going. I thought that was that was good in the, at the end of that. Was the play up front on offense over? Was it, was it as good as last week? Was it a continuation of last week? I, you don't have to see it on tape, but I thought we controlled the game. I don't know what the final yards rushing were. I don't know what the numbers were. And that's Wisconsin. You know, what I mean, like that's a tough physical team, and you know they held they held uh, Oregon last week to 16 points. You know, what I mean, like they held Penn State. Penn State scored a late touchdown to make it 28. Um, no one's no one the whole year. I don't think it was maybe Alabama scored this many points on them. So I would assume you know that we ran the ball well. I thought we were able to drop back and throw the ball on first and second down without you know without any heat coming at us. And um, you know guys executed like like the play to Emmett down the sideline. I don't know if you guys remember that. That's that's just you know that's the hot and that's just Dylan doing his job and Emmett getting his head around. So uh, you know it looked to me, but I'll have to watch the tape. It looked to me like we really ran the ball well. And the drive before the half, 
uh, we were in kind of a two-minute mode, but we were in 12 personnel. We were in two tight ends, and that allowed us to kind of have a run-pass mix. Um, and I just think that's kind of – I don't think that was planned. I think just kind of Dana was feeling it, and the guys were moving the ball. So I would think so, but I'd have to watch the tape. Is there any, is there any part of this that's a feeling of relief? Yes, 100%. 100%. <laughs> And again, it's, 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 it's relief in that um, I've got the benefit of doing this twice before and, and, and you know, staying, like, I think I said to you guys, like, like when I made, even made the change with Dana, like, I look at the weight room, I look at the training room, I look at sports science, I look at sports psychology, I look at, you know, the, the player development, I look at the recruiting, I look at all the things we're doing and believe it's all right and it's all going to pay off in a big way. It's just, you know, I look at the players and they're coming in every day and then it's a close loss and then it's a close loss. Will this work? Will this work? Will this work? And I would have liked to have gotten our sixth win a long time ago. But there's something really important to us about playing Wisconsin. Um, you know, to be quite honest with you, uh, Julie and I sat there two years ago and we watched the Wisconsin game. And uh, it looked like it wasn't going to work out where I was going to come be the head coach, you know, just because couldn't make things work. I remember watching that game and watching Wisconsin just, it was a close game, and then Wisconsin just kind of beat us up on the line of scrimmage and pull away at the end of that game. And then soon thereafter, Trev and I were able to work some things out before the Iowa game. Um, so to come, to, you know, full tilt two years later, to be, able, to be able to run the football in the game, to be able to stop the run, um, you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of them. But it, it does feel like relief, and it feels like relief because I, I want those those older players to leave here. You know, like Giff kept saying, like, you know, you know, as he was walking on halftime, like, I want to change the program forever. And I'm just, just, you know, obviously we're not where we were in the 90s. We're not there. I'm saying just in terms of, like, the – like we're not snake bit. There is no curse. You got to just go play good football. And <laughs> if you play good football, good things will happen. So we'll have to do that again Friday versus a great team. Well, so the Corey Barney put together a career high in receptions and yards as well. How special has it been to see him grow throughout the season? Yeah, you know, um, Jacory is one of the most competitive guys I've ever been around. Uh, he's one of the hardest working guys, you know. And um, you know to, what I like about him is, you know, he doesn't really like. You know, we're not out there trying to scheme guys up to get open. Like we're, you know, coach is calling plays, and, and Ja'Cory runs a, runs a route as hard if he's the first progression as if he's the fourth progression. Um, he runs every play like it's the last play of his life. And, uh, and he's out there catching punts. He's out there catching kickoff returns. And, um, you know, I thought, I thought the game started off at a really, really good note with the way he started off with that, that kickoff return, you know. And so you think about our special teams and where we were at Purdue to where we are now, where we're kicking the ball, we're punting the ball down to the five-yard line, we're turning kicks out past the 50. You know, I wish it would have happened earlier, but a guys like Ja'Cory, when they want to play special teams, I think it, it lights everybody else up. Like, hey, I can do this. And we had a bunch of starters out there playing on the special teams today. All good. Hey, my last question. Is this the image, Johnson, you guys have thought you were going to see this season? Uh, um, you know, I don't, want to, I don't want to say like – I don't want to say that make sure I couch it the right way. I just think Emmett's got uh, – Emmett's like all of our guys on offense. You know, like there, there's, there's been like – you know, there's been – there's probably, you know, as you go through the season, you're not scoring enough points. You start to, you know, start to lose maybe a little the confidence, maybe in what we're doing. No, you're not even in yourself. But Emmett, to me, like, was a, a game breaker today. He was a difference maker. Um, I wish Ramir could have been out there. You know, obviously, uh, Ramir Johnson, if you guys knew the, the things he's overcome this year to, 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 to be out there, I mean, it's just an uh, amazing person. But, uh, but it, was, it was Emmett, and I thought he played really, really hard. And then Dante, you know, some big crucial ones on third down, the ones even to score the touchdown. I thought the backs hit it and played hard. But, uh yeah, I think I think a lot, we have a lot of Carter Nelson. You know, Carter Nelson's out there playing. Then he makes a tackle on kickoff. You know, there's there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. If they just stop at the end of the year and catch their breath and look up, they've really gotten better over the course of this year. And um, you know, now we have a couple extra weeks of bowl practice to to, to try to get them even to another level. Okay, what, what did you do to celebrate? Well, what I do to celebrate. You do to celebrate. Yeah, I'm not talking about that, guys. Don't ask me. I won't talk to you. <laughs>